Welcome to After Dark Creations Art Review. I'm Jen, maker of monsters, first of my name, here to share my love of movies and television with you. This week, I'll be reviewing Game of Thrones Season 8. I'll break down highlights from each episode, and then I'll give you my overall impression of the final season. If you would like to see my review of Season 1 through 7, I will link that video in the description below. And also, I did a podcast interview with Dusty Dawn Art, and I will link that in the description below as well. Let's get to Game of Thrones Season 8. Spoiler warning ahead. Episode 1, Winterfell. Jon and Daenerys arrive with their two dragons and vast army to defeat the Night King. This episode is full of tension and long-awaited reunions. Sam's revelation to Jon was incredibly well acted, and I love seeing Jon and Arya reunite. It was a good start to a controversial season. Episode 2, A Knight of the Seven Kingdoms. On the eve of battle, as our characters face down an almost certain death, my favorite part was when Jaime knighted Brienne. I think it's the first time I've seen her character smile in the entire series. I love that scene so much. That was the best scene by far. So many of our characters were sitting around a fire, conversing, and singing Jenny's song. Not to be confused with the 1980s 8675309 Jenny song, which is another one that, since my name is Jen, I heard a lot of. This was where John reveals his Targaryen lineage to Danny. It is heartbreaking and sad to see her reaction as she realizes he has a better claim to the Iron Throne. He professes his loyalty to Danny and says that he has no interest in ruling. Episode 3. This is the main event battle between the world of man and the armies of the undead. The battle was intense, and I was sitting at the edge of my seat. I was also incredibly worried for Ghost as he was seen on the front line and wasn't referenced again. After the episode, I actually googled to check and see that Ghost was still alive. There were elements of survival horror, especially when Arya was hiding and running from the White Walkers that had entered Winterfell. That was particularly frightening. Alright, let's get to the major highlight. Arya killing the Night King. That was amazing. I was cheering for her the whole time and then when the Night King grabbed her neck I was like oh no. I was so worried she was gonna die but she did the whole knife drop and then go. Oh, that was so awesome. Uh, Very stressful but awesome. Many fan favorites were lost. It was gratifying to see the Night King but it did take a great cost to the armies of Danny and those who lived in Winterfell. Tragedy befell all of our characters. By far this was the most heart-wrenching episode since the Red Wedding. Episode 4, The Last of the Starks. This was all about mourning, then looking to the war ahead. Important narrative points happen that lead up to the bells, including Rhaegal being shot out of the sky by Huron Greyjoy's fleet, and Missende being captured, then being beheaded by Cersei standing at the gates of King's Landing. This was another intense and stressful episode that had fans questioning some of the narrative choices this season. Episode 5, The Bells. This is going to be the most controversial of the entire series. I have a feeling when people talk about Game of Thrones as a whole, this will be brought up in conversation as the story turning point. Daenerys takes a heel turn and Jaime turns his back on redemption. Basically, he abandons his character growth from season 2 to this point, just to return to Cersei. It was one of the greater disappointing aspects of the episode. I know I don't go a lot into negativity on my channel, and definitely there's a lot to unpack. Like I've said before, I like to keep things positive here. You'll mostly hear highlights from me, things I enjoyed, but I did have feelings about this episode. Danny had been portrayed as a hero. She was a character many fans got behind. Women rallied for her as a feminist icon. Although I understand her heel turn as far as narrative storytelling goes, foreshadowing is not enough to secure that kind of change in a character. So fans are now left with a mad queen whose madness really didn't have time to develop. I think if there were more episodes in the series, they could have explored this at greater length, but unfortunately, a lot of plot points had to be wrapped up rather quickly. For many fans, her turn was jarring and abrupt. Aside from narrative issues, this episode was very visually interesting. The way the camera followed Arya through the ash-laden streets was amazing looking. My favorite part was the hound's battle with the mountain. The fight was brutal and the best kind of fan service. We had been waiting for this showdown since season one, and I was not disappointed. Pointed. The fiery end for the Hound was a good death and fitting for the character. Although I have mixed feelings about this episode and narrative choices, the cinematography was arguably some of the best of the series. Episode 6 there's a reason writers say endings are hard. You have to wrap up all your story threads which you've been building to for years and give your characters a satisfying conclusion. 
Very often, fan theories, expectations, and speculation can leave viewers dissatisfied with the ending. For the final episode, I'll be discussing lows and highs from the episode as well as my overall thoughts on the series, in order to end on a positive note. In this episode, our characters echo the shock and disillusionment of the audience over Danny's heel turn. That brings us into the lows of the episode. I believe her turn was one of the biggest narrative missteps of the series. Danny's break into the Mad Queen deserved more development than just foreshadowing. I understand the motivation to subvert expectations and have a heroic character corrupted by power, but that kind of arc must be well plotted and make sense for the character. What I found most disheartening about Danny's arc was her character fell into a rather disheartening trope that has always been a justification for denying women positions of power. The strongest and arguably most powerful woman in the entire series was too emotional and unstable to rule. In the end, it's heartbreaking to have a show that was known for breaking genre stereotypes to lean so heavily on such a disillusioning narrative. In a genre that often relegates women to the evil queen or damsel in distress, I hoped that Daenerys would subvert that trope. It is one of the biggest disappointments of the series. My final low of the episode was Bran becoming king. For most of the series, Bran was nothing more than a convenient expositional device for the audience. His character was aloof and rather dull. He seems more interested in warging than ruling, making Tyrion the de facto king. Bran may make a good king if you believe good justice is dispassionate. Then the most detached and dispassionate character of the series becoming king is fitting. I just kept thinking, why didn't Sansa become queen? She cares about the people and has experience. She would have been a temperate and just ruler of the Seven Kingdoms. It also would have made a nice counterpoint to Daenerys's mad queen art and may have lessened the evil queen queen versus damsel in distress trope that I find so upsetting. Highlights. As always, the cinematography was beautiful. The scene where Danny addresses her army while Drogon extends his wings was pretty epic. Peter Dinklage was wonderful, and he had some of the best lines of the episode. I also loved John's reunion with Ghost. I'm glad he left the wall to be with the free folk. He belongs in the wild north with them. Drogon's response to finding Danny was gut wrenching. His melting of the throne was symbolic and echoed Danny's desire to break the wheel. The Iron Throne was destroyed, and thus the game of thrones thrones ends. Arya's conclusion was also very satisfying, and I'd love to see a spin-off, West of Westeros, starring Arya. Overall series review. Satisfied by the ending or not, there's no denying Game of Thrones was one of the most character-driven and compelling series of our generation. I'm going to miss it. Missteps in the final season aside, the series as a whole was phenomenal. I'm floored by the creator's accomplishments, the sheer scale of the series, the characters, and the immersive world of politics and interest they created was staggering. Tell me what were your high and lows of season 8 in the comment section below. As always, I'm Jen and let's keep it spooky, friends.